Hi, I'm Adam with Yukon HKN, and today we're going to be going over common emitter amplifiers. So, common emitter amplifier, how is that different from a common base, common collector? Well, let's draw it. We have your BJT right here. And you have your base, you have your emitter, and you have your collector. Now our base is going to be connected to our input voltage, VI. Our collector is going to be connected to a resistance. source voltage, and we're going to measure our output here. And this will be our collector resistance, RC. Our emitter is going to be connected to ground. Now what makes this a common emitter configuration? Well here, I'll just write this real quick. What makes this a common emitter configuration of this amplifier. Well, if we see at the base, we have a V in, which can change. At the collector, we have a V O, V out, which also changes. At the emitter, though, we have a constant voltage, something that is common throughout the circuit. And so, it is a common emitter amplifier, because it is at the same voltage. Not necessarily because it's grounded, although it usually is, it's because it's at the same voltage. And so if there was a source here of two volts or something like that, it'd still be a common emitter amplifier. It would just have a source there. And so this is our common emitter amplifier. Let's do a problem with it. Let's say that we know IC, the collector current, is 250 microamps. And let's say that we know the collector resistance RC is, mm, let's say, 20K ohms. OK, OK, so what do we want to find out? How about, how about let's find out the output resistance, RO, the input resistance, RI, and the transconductance, GM. Okay, okay. Now this looks like a fun problem. Where should we start though? Hmm. How about the transconductance? Now do you guys remember the equation for transconductance? GM. GM is IC over VT. IC being the collector current, VT being thermal voltage. Now you might be asking, okay, what's thermal voltage? I don't know what that is. Well, it's usually given or the same in any device. So it's going to be 26, 25 millivolts. It depends. My professor says to choose one that suits your needs. So if they don't specify, if it's 25 or 26 millivolts, then choose one that makes calculations easier. In this case, before we write down the rest of the equations, we could just solve GM right now. That's transconductance. We, can, we know IC. It's 250 microamps. And we know VT because we're assuming assume VT equals 25, we'll say, millivolts. Some say 26. We'll say 25. And so do the calculations here. We have 250 microamps over 25 millivolts. And now you see why I chose 25 millivolts over 26 millivolts. The difference in the end is going to come down to a couple percentage points. Not that important at this point. If it was, then we could change it to 26, or we could specify what value we actually need. But for this, we're just trying to find GM, RI, RO. And so 25 is going to do. So what is that? We could do a quick calculation and find it at 0.01. And that's the units for transconductance. 
and we have one of our values already. Excellent, excellent. But what about RO and RI? Hmm. Well, for that, we're going to have to do some small signal analysis. That's going to require us to redraw our circuit for small signal analysis. Now, in small signal analysis, we take our BJT and we change it into a representative model. I like to use the hybrid pi model. Some people use the T model. Uh, in this example, we're going to be using the hybrid pi model. So first, we'll translate this BJT just into the pure hybrid pi model without any connecting anything. So we're going to be translating it from here, just, just cutting this BJT out, right? And then putting it over here in AC analysis. So what do we have? We will have, label this small signal, and we will have right over here an R pi, V pi, a voltage dependent current source, GM times V pi, and if we label these nodes, we'll find that this is the emitter, this is the base, and this is the collector. And so that's our BJT, just translated into small signal analysis. Now, at these nodes, we have different things in our circuit, right? Well, at the base, we have this input voltage. At the emitter, we have just ground. And at the collector, we have a resistance and a DC voltage source, we, and also our output voltage, which we have to measure. So how can we connect these to this? Let's start at the emitter, because that's the easiest one. Emitter is connected straight to ground, so we can just connect at the ground. We don't have to worry about it. No resistance there, because we know that this is common. And for VCC and other DC sources, when you're doing DC analysis over here, we turn those into short circuits when we're translating into AC or small signal analysis. Now, for if we had a current source over there, we would make it open, and so on. So we have a ground here. But like I said, we have this voltage source over here, VCC, which is providing some voltage. We don't really know what because they didn't give it to us in the problem. We just have VCC. So we'll connect that to ground because voltage sources uh, from DC translate to shorts in AC in the small signal analysis. And so we're looking over there. We have a couple other things we have to connect there. We have RC. So before we do that, we'll connect this RC right here. RC. And I almost forgot, we have an RO, an internal resistance for this. So some peop sometimes you don't include that, sometimes you do. In this example, we're going to include the input resistance, or the, uh, sorry, the internal resistance for the BJT. And so we have RC over here, which is connected to C, and it's still inside. So this is still, that RO, that internal resistance, is still part of the internal BJT. It's not affecting outside. It's not f coming from over here, over here, over there. It's just still inside the BJT. Coming back to this, we have RC, which is our collector resistance, and we have our VO. I'm measuring that to ground, and that's our VO, output voltage. And so we're done at the collector side, we're done at the emitter side. Now we have to worry about the base. Now what do we have the base? We just have this input voltage. And so this input voltage is not just a DC source, it's a DC source, or a battery, plus an AC source. Otherwise, we wouldn't be doing small signal analysis. Now, the AC part of this, this power source is just a signal that's transmitted on top of this DC voltage. and so. When we're doing small signal analysis, 
We're not looking at this because we're shorting that. So it goes straight through there. We're just looking at the small signal. And so what I'm trying to say is that we're just going to connect this to a V in that is an AC current source or an AC voltage source. And so now we have our small signal circuit. Now we have to start finding our RO and RI. But before we do that, we have a couple equations that are related to the small signal analysis. We have R pi, we have GM, V pi, we have all these things, RO, that you might not be familiar with, but there's some equations that are related to them. I'm going to write them down right here for you. We have R pi over here, which is going to be equal to beta over GM. And then we have RO, which is going to be equal to, uh, what is it? It's VA, early voltage, over IC, yes, collector current. Collector current. And then that's also equal to 1 over eta times GM. Because I know you're looking at this one right over here. RO and you're saying, um, I don't know what VA is. What is early voltage? Well, early voltage is usually given to you in the problem. As you can see in our problem, it's not. So how can we even do RO? Well, there are some of these values, even going back to R pi, we're going to R pi, we have beta, which we don't necessarily know because the problem didn't give it to us, but we can assume. And that's where we're going to start making assumptions. We have beta here and we have eta here. Both of those are values that we can assume based off of the fact that this is a BJT and an NPN one at that. So we have beta right over here. We're going to assume that's going to be 200 because it usually is. If they don't tell you otherwise, it's usually about 200 or so. And so beta, we're going to, for this problem at least, we're going to say it's 200. Now we don't know early voltage. But we do know for this device usually what eta is going to be. And that's what that n is, by the way. And that's eta. I don't know if you know, but we're HKN, eta kappa nu. We're uppercase. That's a lowercase eta. So short aside, wow, that doesn't look like an n. I'm going to erase that for you. Did I say n? I meant eta. Oh, well. That's not much better, but. So our eta is going to be 2 times 10 to the negative 4. See all these values you've got to remember? Horrible, I know. Nah, what are you going to do? Memorize them. It'll be easier, trust me. So we got beta here. Do it in a different color. And we know GM. We know our transconductance already. We'll do 200 divided by GM, which is 0 0.01. And what does that get us? That gets us about... 20k. What am I saying? That's exactly 20k. So, 20 kilo ohms. Kilo, kilo ohms. Kilo ohms. Let's do RO next. We have RO, and we're going to be using this one because we know eta over here in GM. That's going to be 1 over 2 times 10 to the negative fourth. Just a little shorthand right there. And times GM is 0 0.01. What's it going to get us? That's a big number. I know you're looking at that being like, wow, RO is big. 500. 500 kilo ohms. So we have RO. We have R pi. You're wondering, why are we doing this? Well, we, s we have to find out what R in and R out are. R in is going to be here. R out is going to be here. And so R in is going to be equal to R pi. And so we have that value. That's just going to be 20K. So we found it. We found R in. It's 20K. We're good. We have two thirds of the problem done. Now we'll finish it up with R O. R O. That's going to be a little bit more difficult. Not too much more difficult, though, because it's just parallel resistors. We know how to do that. 
looking through my circuit. You know how to do that. Now, which resistors are going to be in parallel? Well, it's going to be RO and RC. Do we remember RC? Yeah, we have it as one of our given values at the beginning. RO, RC is going to be equal to uh, what is it? It's, uh, 500 K, negative 1 plus 20 K, negative 1, negative 1. That's just a shorter way of doing parallel resistors. And what do you get for that? You're going to get, you're going to get about 19.23 kilo ohms. And so we have this. Write that down over here. 19.23 kilo ohms. And so we found all three of our values that we wanted at the beginning. That squeak though, am I right? And so that is how we analyze our common emitter amplifier in a regular old problem. I've been Adam with HKN at UConn here, and uh, I'll see you later.